you know, you're seen as a, a five million pound signing, but when you get injured, you're just a piece of off meat in the butchers that gets thrown to one side. And I'll never forget the second injury that I got at Leeds United. I'm walking down the corridor, I'm on crutches, and the chief scout had walked past me um, going the opposite way. And he said, well, you've just cost us a bloody 30 million, because I've had to go and sign Robbie Fowler now because of your injury. We had a cracking year, we finished third in the Premier League in the following year I was playing Champions League football. A nasty injury happened against a Turkish team in Besiktas and I just managed to change my run and cut inside of the defender and as I planted my foot, his blade and stutter got caught in the back of mine and all the momentum of me trying to basically bring my leg up had just been obliterated and it, it dislocated my ankle. I snapped three ligaments and tendons in and around the ankle joint and I lost all the mechanism um, to my big toe basically. The big toe was paralysed. I woke up in the morning and literally my from my knee down to my ankle had gone black overnight. I had an internal bleed. I was rushed straight into hospital. They cut open the, the bleed and they had a look at the extent of the damage and that's when they realised how bad it actually was. Reality strikes is when you find out that you've got a doctor telling you and a surgeon that they've only ever seen this injury before that was in a motorbike accident when somebody actually snapped the inside ligaments on their leg and that you would never play football ever again. That's when the, the shock and the panic kicks in because it's something that you've, you've grown up all your life wanting to be, a professional footballer, and you get to the age of 21 and it can be taken away from you just like that. So the rehab process was, was long and basically just trying to learn how to walk properly again. That was the biggest thing. Uh, my mindset was going into the dark places. At times you'd wake up in the morning, I wouldn't answer my telephone. I wouldn't speak to family members. I wouldn't ring the physio because I just didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't know what it was at the, at the time. And there was moments when I wouldn't open the curtains for three or four days. I just want to lie in bed and feel sorry for myself. And it was, you know, when, you, when you're hiding away from your physio and your family, and you, you, you know, I hit, hit the drink quite a bit as well. And I just lost my way. And thankfully, friends and family pulled me through that dark period where I was wanting to get up out of bed again and go and train hard and give the rehab an, another, another opportunity. And that was the hardest thing, trying to keep sight of the vision that, that you will play football once again. So I think once we realised that I'd had a, a bit of depression and what it, what it was, and every time the signs came back, I, I was able to get through it. I'd ticked off the walk and I'd ticked off the running, I'd been swimming, I'd been cycling, the rehab had gone great. So I'd trained, I'd had the reserve matches and David O'Leary had come and said, Michael, I think you are ready to, to step in again. And it, it was enormous, it was absolutely enormous to, to get that honour to step out on the field again and it was in a European match. And there's no better feel running back out at Ellen Road, getting that buzz again and the factor of what you've, you've grown up to love. And sadly, four minutes into that game against Malaga, I'd gone away from the defender. And as I did that little push off, I just heard this almighty bang. And then the pain kicked in. And that's when the moment I looked down, I just saw my foot literally dangling. And it was the left leg this time. And literally got to the sideline and Dave Hancock told us the news. He said, mate, I'm gonna have to strap your leg. Um, you've ruptured your Achilles tendon on the left side. And it was just absolutely shattering. And I turned to Dave, I said, what's the rehab process on this, mate? He said, you're looking at eight to, eight to 10 months. You can still see I'm getting a little bit um, emotional about it now. When I look back, because of so much hard work and effort went into getting back to something you love. And it was, it was devastating to realise the reality. Thankfully, at this point, I'd met my now wife and Kate, so I had a lot of support. And I think if I hadn't had my wife present with me and the good support of Dave Hancock, the physio, I wouldn't have got through it and I probably would have thrown the towel in. When I look back now and I look at the person that is Michael Bridges now and I look back and see a stronger person, a more resilient person, understanding life, understanding the game because of their injuries and the hard work and ethic that you had to put in, the dark days, the great days. Um, and it's just, it just given me a real good armory to take forward and, and it, it's helped us recognise when other people, like I say, are struggling or there's players that are getting injured, they're very, very vulnerable. I got back to playing football, not at the highest level. I had to go down the divisions to find my love of the game again. And the hardest reality of that is playing in the new Camp and then playing at Brunton Park. But I'll tell you what, playing at Brunton Park for a season in front of Carlisle fans shouting your name was a special moment as well, thinking that the days of football were never going to be seen again.
Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.